Okay, day three of the Halloween week with Adobe Medium, and today we're going to focus on the clothing. So we're going to do a dark purple cape, the hood, the arms and the sleeves, and we're going to get it all flowing correctly with all of those great Adobe Medium tools. Okay, day three, we're gonna do the clothing now. We've done the broom, we've done the witch, but what we need to do now is use this tool, one of my favorite tools. This is the cut tool. Let's see if it works. And we've chopped a head off, look at that, I love it. Uh, I don't love chopping heads off, obviously. What I do love is the fact that I can separate these parts, and the reason I would want to separate them is because I want to be able to do this and repose and repose each bit as, as we do it. So, um, see we've already moved that hand a little bit. So with this now, we're gonna do the clothing. So let's do, chop it here. And then we'll chop the, um, right, I'm gonna take that down because what I want is, I want to do the bloomers as part of the legs. So we almost, so this is slightly different now. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna duplicate it. So, uh, I don't know if you can hear there's a beeping going on, but what's happened is, and I say this because um, in my very first Nomad video, I left a fire alarm um, with a battery out of it and it was beeping and it's quite, it's quite well known now on my channel that um, it, it, people still watch that video. We get about 100 people a day watching it and moaning about the fire alarm beeping, uh, which is quite right, you should never leave a fire alarm, but um, beeping is now one of those things that bakes my noodle when it happens, but I can't do anything about it. So, because this is a, a live session in the middle of the day that we weren't planning, um, and we've got that lovely beeping, it's gone anyway. So there you go, we've put the witch. So what I did there was duplicated it, deleted, um, so we had two copies of it, the the you know of the clothing. Um, you can see where it belongs because you can just line it back up like that. Um, so we had two copies of the legs and the clothing, and then we just um, moved it back. Um, one without the legs, and then one without the 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 cape. And that's going to be really helpful because we can move the. So for example, we can move the cape around without affecting the legs now. And that means we can really get on with designing this now um, and not worry about um, messing up stuff that we've already done. So we'll just move that down there. She's got her knickerbockers or whatever they're called. Uh, in fact, does that need to come forward a bit? Yeah, we're still we're still tinkering with the design look. Even even though we say we've locked it, you know, we'll change it as, as needs be. Um, got the head, got the arms separating, we've got the clothing. And the cape. So let's this this one today. This this bit is all about the clothing. So I'm going to go paint. Um, I don't want it to be just black because it would be no fun at all. So full opacity, large brush, and we'll just flood all over the the clothing. The arms are going to have to have a bit of it. It might be better in a moment to split the arms off. Uh, sorry, the upper part of the arm from the lower part of the arm so that we get that clothing all welded in together into one piece. In fact, I will do that. I'll do that next. So if all of this is... Once this is done... So we'll do exactly what I just said. So we will use the cut tool again. Saw off her arm. Put her arm back. Put this arm back. And we can move that around a bit. And this one, remember this one? Saw it off, put that arm back, and put that arm back, that's good. And now all we need to do is, let's just move that cape back in, is we need to isolate, uh, sorry, well, basically seal these back together. So we want this one ticked, we want this one, we want this one, not that one, that one, that one, uh, that one, is that everything? So it's the cape, the clothing, 
the arm, left arm and the right arm. There you go, they're all together. So we just ticked all of them and we just do merge. There we go, all done in one go. Um, so that's great now because I can, one, I can go to clay, make sure now because we've colored it, we'll just pick the same color. So from the palette, and now we can start making sure that when we paint the clays, there we go, see, the clay's gonna be of the right color and it's all gonna be on the right layer. So we're gonna destroy a little bit as we're going now, as you can see. Uh, don't know why, but she had quite a big chest then. And as we all know, witches have a propensity to have a small chest. I don't wanna put her in a category. I don't want to um, in any way stereotype her, but I wasn't feeling like I wanted a um, witch with a large chest today. So, um, I've, I've used what would be probably politically incorrect, but I've used the uh, the flatten tool for the chest. So, um, in fact, no, I didn't use the flatten tool. I used the smooth tool. But realistically, the flatten tool would be the tool you'd want to flatten a chest, wouldn't it? So, let's just put the arm back in there. Um, I like it when you're doing stuff like this because once you start getting the colours in place, uh, it helps. It really helps to. You know, you, you feel like you're designing the character then, because because I'm just working on the purple side of things now. It's it's just feels better, doesn't it? So what I'm doing now is I'm doing clothing. Um, oh, we've made a mistake there. Look, what I'd done there is I'd left it on the wrong layer. So we've got to make sure we be careful of that because it won't weld back in. It'll be in the wrong layer if we don't. Just see how the clothing is looking like it's pulling. And that's what we've really got to work on now, which is folds and the pulling. And bear in mind, because we're fairly low resolution still, um, you are going to get uh, you're going to lose a lot of your detail when you smooth it down. So be a little bit careful at this stage. Don't go, you know, don't go putting too much detail in yet until we know um, that the characters we're happy with it and it's done. Because your smoothing could easily mess it all up. Just need to paint a little bit there again. What I will do is I'll colour those knickerbockers for now. Um, maybe they need to be a completely different colour to help me, so I'll go completely red with those. No, I won't. Yeah, no, I won't. There we go. And then um, her shoes will be black. Oh, not red. Black. And then we already know we're going to have it's witchy socks, isn't it? So these are going to be when we when we finally do it. Stripey. We'll work that out later, but at least we're getting an idea now. So back to the clothing, back to the clay brush. Let, oh no, this is folded round here. Look, and then bring that around. Fill it up. Fill up the volume, and that would be pulling from here. Smooth it down. She needs some sort of a work, like a hood, I guess, that would go in to flow into the cape. So it needs a collar here that would be, you know, it would come down to the part of the neck. So if I could fill that right up at the bottom there. And then she'd have lots of folded up garments here oh sorry folds in the garment here so you can see there i'm just gonna put that in and see how it see how it comes out and then use the negative see if that helps yep that's a bit better and her clothing will come around here over the top and down and then a fold down there that would go out to here Now, I, I'm not using reference here, and that's not the best way to do it. You you know, if you don't know clothing, you don't know folds, go and get yourself some reference and bring it in here if needed. Um, the only reason I'm doing it this way is we, we do a lot of cloth stuff at work. I use ZBrush's new features a lot. Um, cloth Dynamics, that's quite useful. I use Cinema Door 4D's cloth, and I use Maya's cloth. So um, it does teach you... One thing I haven't used much of is Marvelous Designer's cloth. 
but once you start researching cloth and getting into how a, how a cloth folds, you'll find a, a repeatable set, set of things happen, and that can be emulated while you're sculpting. So you don't always rely on um, the, the software to do it for you. Like now, we're, we're fully relying on ourselves, um, or fully relying on me at this point. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not completely convinced that I'll get it right in the first go. Um, maybe this would fall around here, around the fall around the broom a little bit there, and then fall down the middle, maybe, and then folds would come over the top. I'm just switching to the layer of. Maybe a bit more to do on that, I don't know. Let's move this around. So we want that to really sweep around. And this is cool, this this tool is made by a guy called Dave Farrell. Um, look him up, um, I, I often bang on about this, but I love the move tool in Oculus Medium. It is, yeah, it is one of my most favorite tools in all 3D packages. Honestly, you might think that's crazy when you think of what we've got to work with in ZBrush and Cinema and Maya and all these wonderful packages, Blender now. Um, but that move tool, I, I don't have that ability to move clay around and twist it while I'm moving in, in any other package. So that is incredible. That's, you know, for a sculptor, um, it's just a great thing to have. There we go. Getting there now. I think that cake needs to be black to be a traditional witch. Um, we do need to do one thing here, duplicate her head. Delete out the head, go back to clay. Take the other one and delete out the hat and then we can make a completely separate head. And again, like I said to you, we'll do that, we'll do maybe we will even do that with symmetry on. Oop, wrong color. Pick a color. Done. We'll just smooth that down because we're going to sculpt this hat a bit now. So let's make, let's put it back on the head first of all. Don't even remember where the head was now. That's not very clever, was it? Um, put it like this for now. Smooth it right down and then go to clay. And we had a large this thing here, just a large plate. There we go. And then, guess what? Tool move tool. And then we can really make the hat a bit special. We can come mess with that a bit more later. Get a bit crazy on the top. Such a great tool, I have to say. It's uh, it's an incredible tool for for concepting like this. Just for just for bashing out your ideas. There we go. And we'll, we'll, I'm going to change that. I, I don't doubt it for one minute, but. Um, That's almost, almost, almost there. Bring her forward a bit like that. I might even turn her hat up like this. So as if it's flapping in the wind and we see her face a bit more. There we go. Quite happy with that. Um, maybe just use the move tool a little bit more. Look how liquid that looks. It's just so cool. Love it. Smooth it down at the back a bit. And that'll do for now. That'll do for the clothing. I'm quite happy with that. Um, 
So that'll do for day three, the clothing, and now we'll move on to, let's move on to the hands and the legs. I hope you're enjoying this witch Halloween special. So this is a five part series and we're gonna work through the whole of the witch ending up with the, the final render and some paint overs. If you're enjoying this kind of content, then please subscribe, hit the notification bell and follow along. We drop videos on a Wednesday and a Friday.